love it when he just kind of moves all around all over the place and the enemy ain't got a clue what he's fixing to do. I love it. Stephen was talking about today was probably not going to say it right. Simchat Torah? Okay. I said it right. I don't know how my southern Hebraic was. But I was looking at that today, the, the celebrating of the annual cycle of reading you know, the Torah in synagogue. And I believe the Lord said, I'm going to restore a love for the word. Anybody need that? You just need a love restored for reading God's word. He, he may give you a reading assignment. Like one time he had me read through the Bible in different translations. I think it was last year, a year before Kim was reading about mountains. He may drop something in you, but just, Lord, a love for your word. Renew a love for your word in us today, Lord God. I thank you for that, Father. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Amen. Come up higher, friend. Step into your commission. Ah. I sort of, the Lord gave me this word. He gave me a phrase, commissioned up higher. I was reading it. He gave me the phrase, and I sort of was studying out to see what God was saying. And in Luke chapter 14, there's actually a, um, a parable. It was of a wedding feast, and he's speaking to people that are actually looking for a position. But the Lord says, um, friend, go up higher. He said, wait until you're invited up. And then he said, friend, go up higher or come up higher. You're being invited up tonight. He's calling you friend, come up higher. And, and I like this friend word, friend, come up higher. Now, when I think of a friend, I don't know, it might be the same thing you think of. Think about somebody we have like the same interest. We're probably close to the same wiring. You know, we, we get along. We like to eat the same things. You know, what, what you think about when you think about friends, somebody that you can trust, somebody that's there for you. Well, I like what Jesus says a friend is. In John 15, 14, and 15, he says, You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master's doing, but I have called you friends for all things that I heard from my father I have made known to you. Man. So Jesus said, you're my friend if you do what I tell you to do, right? What if you obey what I command you? Wow. It's a little different look on friend, isn't it? But he said, I call you friends because I want to show you what the father is doing. My goodness. So we want to know what the father is doing as Stephen was talking, as, as Jeannie was talking tonight about all that's going on in the nation and all that God is doing in the church, in the world, in the government, everything, that we want to see and know what the Father is doing, that he calls us friend, friend, come up higher, to be in the know. Lord, let us see, let us hear, just let revelation be unveiled in us, that we would know you, Father, that we would know your ways, know your kingdom in ways that we've never even thought of or dreamed of before. Y'all tracking with me? And I like this in the, the Passion Translation. It says this way, John 15. My friend, come with me and let me seat you in a better place. Come with me and let me seat you in a better place that you may be able to what? See better. So Lord, help us to sit. Seat us in a different place tonight. Let us be able to see you, hear you, know you better. Um, Ephesians 2, 6. He has raised us up, what? Together. And made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That together just stuck out to me. It's, it's two different words that word together. One of them means synergy, and one of them's like a divine placement. So just thinking about this, you know, and I think it was in John where Jesus said, Father, make them one as me and you are one. My goodness. Seated us together with him, that we are one with him like Jesus and the Father are one. You think they're one? Wow. We have a dual citizenship. We know that we're on earth, but we're, we're heavenly, right? A dual citizenship. And we, this has been taught to us many times that we ascend in worship and then descend in war, right? That's not going to change. We're up and down. We, we ascend in worship. God does things like he was doing tonight. He, we ascend in worship. He speaks things. He gives strategies. You know, we, we descend in war. But I think there is part of us that has got to stay seated. We've got to stay in the place of authority. Stay in that seat of authority. In other words, to remember who we are and not just remember it, but live like it. Because I've said it before, there's a devil out there that wants you to forget who you are. I think Stephen was saying that. Doesn't want us to remember, wants us to be so much, to see so much trauma, to see so much stuff going on that we forget who we are. 
that we forget that we have authority to speak in his name, that we forget that we can bind it up and shut it down instead of just coping with it. I seen a, I was looking you know, just on some stuff, Amazon, like Christmas presents or something, and one of them said something about I'm a chaos coordinator. And I'm thinking, oh, that's cute. And I thought, no, I'll bind it up and shut it down. I don't coordinate it. <laughs> so we tolerate. You know, we tolerate things if we've been in it for so long. And God is, I believe he is increasing our authority and showing us who we are because the warfare has changed. We're stepping into different things. This new year is going to look differently, but Father is already there. Now, this, this just absolutely blows me away. It may not you, but it does me. Any time in history we could have been born, any time, any season, and we're born in this one. I mean, this is the season. I would said it for years. I would prophesied it even before we came here, that we're the generation that's going to turn things around, and I had no idea what I was saying. Is that something that God would use us? I heard a, a preacher one time say that, you know, the enemy's doing it in this generation because he thinks he can get away with it. He don't think much of us, but he has greatly underestimated us because like David's mighty men, we're a mess, but God. Do you realize the, the season that we're in, that, that God is pulling out all the stops with his spirit, with his anointing, wanting us to know him because this hour that we live in. My goodness. It's kind of a scary, but it's like, wow. I, I, I get to live in this hour, in this season in history, Lord. I'm not going to read, and I'm not going to be born in the future and get to read about it, but I'm right here in it. God is using us to make history and to change things. Are you listening to me? It is just like, it, 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 it's staggering. You know, it's staggering. Lord, I thank you that you let us stay seated in that place of authority. I, didn't, I thought I clicked it a while ago. It didn't click. It's not clicking. Sorry, I thought I was going to the second slide. It's not clicking. Where is it? Okay, well, that's cool. Okay. <laughs> so what does it mean to be commissioned? That's the word he gave me, that we're commissioning and we're going up higher. What does it mean? Well, the word commission implies a co-mission, right? You're co on a mission with somebody. So in other words, we know what the Father is saying to us, right? But what the Father's doing. One of the things for being commissioned is like an art. You ever heard of somebody like they're painting something? Well, I've been commissioned to do this. Well, what does that mean? It means you've been chosen, what, to create something that's specific, that's unique, that's special, and it's usually costly. If I'm commissioned, you stack that word on there, it's going to be costly, right? So to be commissioned, God is commissioning up, us up higher, is to create something special, specific, or costly. So I think that's kind of neat. You know, that is part of our commissioning thing. Also part of commissioning whoops, is, to bring, is to bring something into working condition, like a, like a warship. We're sitting here in the Freedom Outpost, right? Aircraft carrier. So it's to bring something into active service. Think about a warship. It has to have supplies. It has to have a crew. It has to have weaponry. But most of all, it has to be seaworthy. And combat ready. If you're commissioned, I'm telling you these things. I'm more just giving you information. I'm speaking that, that God is saying, that's what I'm doing in you. If we're not that, if, if we receive the commission, what he's given us, then he said, I'll deal with those things that's not. Are you listening to me? But to be seaworthy and combat ready, to put in active service. God, to put us in active service in a way that maybe we haven't been put in active service before. Last night we were watching TV and it was some car show Duke was watching. I think they've got, was it a British, English, some other accent. And so they found this car in a garage and it looked perfect. I mean, it didn't have a scratch on it. It looked perfect, but it had been sitting for 30 years. And so we're watching it and all of a sudden the guy says, we're going to recommission this 30-year-old vehicle. And I can't tell you how many said, recommission, recommission. Had to go through the motor, change some seals and things. Had to redo the brakes, 
all that kind of stuff, had to flush, the, had to get it in order to, re, to recommission it. So, Lord, as I'm speaking this, I'm saying to us and anybody watching online or YouTube, where we need to be recommissioned, where we need to be flushed, where something needs to be changed, where there's something leaking somewhere. Lord, we say, deal with that tonight. Show us. And, and somebody even spoke it tonight. There's a perspective change. I prophesy that the atmosphere is crisp. And you're going to see yourself exactly where you are. That's not in a negative light, but it's like, oh, okay, God, this is what you're doing. And you're trying to give me this. You're going to be able to grab a hold of what you could not grab a hold of before because you're going to see where you're at. You're going to see where he wants you to take, wants to take you. You're going to see the commissioning, whether it's a new commissioning or a recommissioning. You're kind of going to understand, oh, that's why all hell has been breaking loose because God is commissioning me in this hour, in this season. You don't have anything to go back and to compare it to because the world, the earth has never been in this spot before. We've never been here before. We need to be writing the history books of it. Because we've never been this place before. To be put in active service. Commissioning also means a change in rank, in leadership, to increase leadership, to increase the sphere of authority. Don't be surprised for the Lord for promotion, for promotion to be coming. It's the hour, it's the season for promotion to come. And on your job spiritually for promotion to come. It's a commissioning from Almighty God. Y'all listening to me tonight. When we're being commissioned, there's an order, there's an authorization, what to do or to produce something. There's, a, there's an assignment, an authority to do or produce something, but this is the thing with all of heaven backing it. Mm. Wow. You know, I don't know anybody that the Lord has ever, ever told to do something and he's like, oh, we're going to fail, you're going to lose. You know, he's never failed, he's never lost. So his anointing, his commission, if we just do what he does, says to do and walk with him, what well, you're going to succeed. He's never, he's never failed. He's not, he's not surprised by what's going on. He's not, got, he's not wringing his hands and, um, and anxious about what, where the enemy is trying to push things. Maybe before he wants it to get there, he's not worried about it. He's done set the bacon, they, bait and they done took the hook. He's like, oh, yeah, come on. And he's doing that with things in our life. To be commissioned. I think that I'd lose my place. Okay. All right, Lord, help me to find my place. Also, a commissioning is, a, is an assignment from the Lord. It's almost like it's a twofold assignment. What the word, the commission that God's given you, in other words, it works on two things. It works on us and it works on the target. It's going to work on you before it does it, and it's going to work on the target. Think about Joseph. You remember Joseph? Man, he went through some stuff. The pit, Potiphar, prison, before he made it to the palace. Well, this is what it said about Joseph in Psalm 105 19. Until the time that his word came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. That, that don't look like much fun, does it? So until that, that assignment, that word that was spoken to Joseph and about Joseph came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. That's sort of why it seems like all hell breaks loose sometimes when you get a prophetic word. To be tested, to be put in the fire, right? It's, it's a word that means to refine metal. Um, see, the word is creating a place it's a creating a foundation. It's building a foundation. And sometimes it's got to destroy to build. It's working in us. Look at Joseph's life. What he had to go through for the pit, through Potiphar, the prison. Are y'all tracking with me? He's, we're had to, what he went through, I'm going to talk more about him in a minute, what he went through to get there. But the word was working something in him, and it was bringing him to a, to a destination. All right? Talking about commissioning. Now, in commissioning... I think it's important to look at God's assignment versus our plan. God's assignment versus our plan. We know how to work our plan, don't we? Or maybe I'll just speak for me. 
you know, God, come on and work my plan. We don't realize we're saying that, but what we're doing is we're saying, come on, God, work my plan. You know, I'm praying for the next step of my plan. This is going to happen. I'm going to do this time I'm 30, then I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. And we're actually praying God to come in to fix, to work our plan. You know, I was thinking about, like, Pax, the little, he's a dog here, a, a white Westie. You know, you can teach him to do tricks, to maybe to fetch a ball, to jump through hoops and all that, but the lion in the tribe of Judah ain't doing none of that. <laughs> now there's Pax. Might need to change his name. Yeah. But our plan versus God's plan. Why, why am I saying that? I, I feel like he's saying that some of us are frustrated, but we're stuck because you're in your plan. Your plan may not be a bad plan. And this is the deal. Sometimes our plan and God's plan looks like it goes the same direction, just we want it. This, this, this. Like you've seen this illustration up there before that Stephen and Kim both have shared. It's like a bowl of spaghetti that's everywhere. It's not a straight line. But we're do this, do that, do this, and then by the time here. So we're frustrated. We may be even stuck, and we're blaming God. Maybe we're looking for a devil when it ain't the devil. It's us. It's God trying to get our attention. You ever been there? Oh, I have. If he's trying to heal something, if he's wanting me to forgive someone or do something, then he just shuts this off, and I'm like, why is this happening? Like, him, why? You know, why? why? Whatever, whatever it is. No, it's God saying, hey, I got something I need you to look at. And it may, it may seem like something small. It may seem like something minor, but the thing is, he knows where we're going. He knows that little ace that's up the enemy's sleeve. Y'all watch them old westerns where they try to cheat and pull it out there at the end. It's the little foxes that spoil the vines. It's the little things that it seems like, well, that's not nothing. But it must be something because he's, he's not going to work your plan until you say, okay, God, I realize you're trying to get my attention. What? Sometimes, and I say this to this house because we are the freedom outpost, you're just not working on your stuff. Hello. Probably the hardest thing I've ever brought down, and I pray it's down. If it's not, we're toward the tail end of it. Is a bitter root judgment and expectancy. It wasn't an easy little prayer. It took time. And you can want to walk away from it and forget about it. But guess what? Your plan's not working. Is God trying to get your attention? What's, what's the last thing he told you to do? What is it he told you to work on? Have you done it? Are you working on it? Well, God, i got to have this, this, and this. No, you're going to the same destination, but I want to deal with this. I'll just shut it all down and sit here. He can wait until you decide to ask me what is going on. What do I need to do? What do you want to do in me? What needs to shift? What needs to change for you to commission me the way you're wanting to commission me? For you to move my life forward in the way that you're wanting to move it forward. Lord, Lord, we surrender to your plan. The thing is, it matters when and how we get there. Our plan might would get it there if God didn't frustrate it, but self can't maintain it. Remember Ishmael? Remember Isaac? Self can't maintain it. If you use works and self to get it there, you got to maintain it, and we can't where we're going. Are you listening to me? So, Lord, I just pray that you drop a plumb line and show us where, where we're trying to do our plans or maybe trying to do it the wrong way. If there's something we, if there's a loose end, show it. Reveal it. Reveal it, Lord. Reveal it. This is part of the commissioning. Now, this assignment that's on the word, the accomplishing power that's on that word that God's spoken to you, it hits the mark and it does not return void. It will work on you as long as you have a breath in your body. Do I need to say it again? It'll work on you as long as you have a breath in your body. You can't outrun it, but you can't reject it, and you can't get stuck, and you can't be frustrated. God's not going to quit working. He's not going to quit moving. You all right tonight? The accomplishing power on His Word is to first the person, and then second the event. What 
than what it is to be produced. To be commissioned comes with an increase in specific authority. That means an increase in specific authority that it changed in your sphere of influence and what you target and your target, what God does there. Lord, Jason, I just step up, step, step, step up for a minute. I just see you being with the Lord and you will walk into meetings. You'll walk into places and open your mouth and say something very simple that somebody may have done said it 50 times, but it's going to cause things to shift just because you've been with the Lord. So I speak an increase of authority. I speak an increase of authority in you and influence that it shifts. And it might be a simple word and you might be like, God, that is so stupid, like rain, something, but it's going to shift it. It's going to shift it. Lord, I thank you for, ooh, increased authority. There it is. Thank you, Father, that you use him, Father. You use him for that. Shoo. Mm. And you're his wife. The Lord says, my hand is upon you, daughter. It has never left you. And I see a, um, a veil being ripped, and the things of the Spirit are going to open up to you. The Lord says, you're wired different from him, but I'm coming to you in ways that may look different from him, but I'm coming to you in ways to speak to you and to make myself known to you and things you've never seen before. So, Lord, I thank you for your beautiful daughter Ooh, and the gifting that rests within you. Shoo. There's a stability in your hands. It's just like in his. What you touch, you cause to get stable. Mm. So, Father, I thank you for her, for her gifting. You're, you're very much um, different, but when I touched you, you're very much a, a piece of one puzzle. So there's ways I feel God on this. Your gifting connects, and there are things that y'all will do together, and it's like just drop the plumb line and just bring stability. And you say something, it's like, well, that was simple, but it's just God is on it. It's on you and it's on him and y'all connect. So, Father, I thank you for that. On them, increased authority. Increased authority, Father. Mm. Come here, come here, Christy. <laughs> I just see the prophetic gift in you. I know you're a prophet perceiver and the Lord says, I'm lighting that prophetic gift up the way it hadn't been lit before. Ooh, there we go, there we go. It's coming alive and it's being lit up. Woo! And you're taking a step up. You already have on the prayer team, but you're taking another big step up. The Lord says, I'll show you deep things. I'll show you things that you'll have to be like, Kim, is this even whatever possible? What is it? But the Lord says, I'll show those things to you. And I I decree that your prophetic gift comes alive. It is lit up. The Lord says, what I put in you is for this hour and for this season. Everything I've done to you, all the critters on the farm, it has been for a purpose and a reason. And he said, you're stepping into that reason. So there's an increase like there that you step up in the intercession. Rebecca, that you step up in intercession. You've already stepping up. You've already, I, I, ooh, mm, I speak freedom, freedom to you in the name of Jesus, that it increases It increases. It increases. It's going to be like, wow, I studied and I walked with God for 20 years that he does it like that. Thank you, Lord. He goes through the family line and he breaks what needs to be broken and he brings you forward. I see him reaching through your family line, grabbing you and just snatching you through. So, Lord, I speak that in the name of Jesus. There's there's um, like ropes and things that are just snapping off of you and snapping off of your family line. So, Lord, I thank you for a new standard for a new authority, for a new plumb line that you use her in intercession and you're used in many ways. For the Lord says, I will put a seasoned, mature word in your mouth that will cause things to shift and change and will cause things to become clear. For daughter, I have given you authority. And when you walk into places that are religious and don't believe me, your presence Your presence shall shake things up. Your presence shall cause people to begin to cry. And they say, I don't know. I just feel the Lord is here. The daughter of the Lord says, all you got to do is just touch them. Just touch them. Just touch them. Your presence. Your presence. Ooh. So, Lord, I prophesy glory. Glory on Rebecca. Ooh. Yeah. There we go. They have no idea what's fixing to walk in the door. (laughs) Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay, Lord, where am I at? Where do you want me at? Uh, Lord, help us to see, to hear, to learn how to wield this authority in a new season. Like Joseph, like we were talking about. Isn't it good to know your pain had a purpose? Everything you've gone through, Hewitt, has a purpose. 
Isn't it good to know that? That God turns it, that somehow or another he works everything to good and just, he's just that good. That it all had a purpose. It all had a purpose. You know, just not to sound cliche, but it's like, we like, well, just believe God. Sometimes we just got to walk in it. We just got to get out there and walk in that authority. I've seen Maggie and I a couple of times like, oh, I don't know if I should or not. You just had to get out there and just walk in it, right? Just do it. Just walk in it. And the interesting thing about a walk, I looked it up, and it's a series, some people say, of controlled falls. It's a controlled falling. I'm thinking, boy, is that it. I'm sec- we're seconds away from disaster, aren't we? <laughs> in our walk, we're seconds away if God don't show up. And, of course, our walk is when, how, how much we do or don't do something, right? It's just what we do. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results, right? As Stephen's been talking to us for weeks and months about our time with the Lord shifting and changing. Has yours changed? Mine's changed a lot. We're doing something different. With a different heart, be more locked in, more focused, but not that definition of sanity. Well, this is all the way I've always done it. We're in a new hour. We're in a new season. It's something. It's something different, and and something shifted, and something's changed us. Lord, help, help us to to catch all that, to be fully present with you, Lord, to give Him more of us. That's that's a statement, and it's easy to say it. To be fully present, to give Him more of you. See, this season's authority doesn't look like last season's. What you're going to speak to this season will cause things to shift and move that last season just stood there and looked at you and smiled. Because I really believe your voice is coded, is created for a time and a season. And like you said about Esther, you're brought into the kingdom for such a time as this. What you spoke to last season and just stood there and smiled at you, it's going to move this season. It's going to break. When you speak to it, when you come up against it, we are being commissioned, aggressively anointed, rightly favored, and endued with increased and specific authority to overcome, unseat, and to occupy positions and territories now. Let me say it again. We are being commissioned, aggressively anointing. It's not a sweet little dabble do you anointing that God is putting on you. It's an aggressive, strong anointing, rightly favored, endued with the increased specific authority to the spear and the realm he's called you to overcome, to unseat, and to occupy positions and territories now. Not next year, not five years from now, but now. As I'm thinking about this, the preparation time has shifted. You know, it used to be, all right, God, prepare us, prepare us, and send us. No, he's saying now you you, you being prepared as you go. You ever been that way, been almost late, trying to zip your pants up, get a shoe on, grab a coat, getting out the door? Ever done that? That's probably the way it's going to look like now. He said, I'm going to prepare you as you go. I had a dream one time, and every step I took was like 10 steps forward. He said, every step is important because you're being prepared as you go. Every little step you make, do you realize the the weight and the authority and the difference that it makes? One step this season will be like 10 last season. Come on. Why it's so important to stay with him and to catch what he's saying and to stay there till you catch it. If you hear something on a Thursday night and like, I don't know, listen to it again till we catch it and we stay where, and we stay and we stay with him. Are you listening to me? I was thinking about probably my favorite book other than the Bible is John Eldridge Resilient. If you have not, if you have not, I've read it a couple of times. John Eldridge Resilient. Oh my goodness. Read it. And I'm like, come on, John, do something else like that. Yeah. But it is just what we got from that book. I have to go back to it over and over. How to live, how to walk, how to be fully present with the Lord. So I'm looking at how things, you know, how they connect, how he builds line upon line with it. Every step is important. Every day is important. If you go to the job 
and it seems like like what you were saying, it's just like, oh, I just want to go to the house and get this over with. Every day is important. Just your presence being somewhere. There are things that are happening, like Jackie was saying, you may not even be reading what's going on, but every day, every step, everything you do is important because you carry God. My goodness. You carry God. Are you listening to me? We carry God. We carry his presence. And we're about to see more and more of that. I'm going to get there. I don't want to get ahead of myself. But time is upon us. We're being commissioned up higher. Y'all tracking with me? In this commissioning, the anointing. This ain't too simple, is it? I told somebody, I hope this isn't going to be a too simple of a message tonight. But Lord, I don't care. You're on it. <laughs> Lord, this anointing, we're, we're kind of we're kind of somewhat skilled in the anointing, aren't we? Somewhat. The anointing. You know, in Acts 10.38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed the devil. If Jesus needed to be anointed, we surely need to be anointed. What, 1 John 2.20, you have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all things. How about Luke 4? The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me. In other words, God's on me because there's an anointing on me. The anointing is increasing in this year in 5785. It's for your family. It's for this region. It's for whatever sphere you're assigned to, but it's for this nation. It's, it's got much bigger than just our family, just your sphere. It's gone to the nation. It's gone regional, right? But the anointing is increasing. The anointing on us to anoint means to smear. We know this or rub with oil. To consecrate for an office or service. To be just smeared and rubbed down with the Holy Spirit. Don't you like that? Just smeared and rubbed down with him. I like the, the shepherds of old, how they would pour oil on the sheep and the ticks and stuff. It would just choke them out and they'd let go. But we're just so greasy. We get so greasy with the anointing. It's like stuff, stuff can't hang on to us. But anointed, oiled, that we stay soft in his presence and stay pliable in the Holy Spirit, that he can do something weird like he did tonight and it not be like we throw it out the door and say, God, I don't understand it, but I know you're here. I went one time to an Hispanic church. I think it was in Moultrie somewhere. There was a lot of people in that church, probably what, at least 200 people. They didn't, none of them speak English, except for me and Duke and the interpreter. One of them spoke English. They didn't, none of them speak English. And they were worshiping, and there was a few other people went, and me and Duke was out there worshiping with them, and they're like, do you understand Spanish? And I'm like, no. Well, you don't know what they're saying. I'm like, if you don't recognize the Spirit of God on that, you dead. I mean, they were worshiping God with their heart. You, I, didn't, I mean, you knew Jesus was in that place. I've never seen anything like it, the way they were going after him, the men. And I was just going after him, and I'm like, okay, I'm in. I don't know what you're saying, but I know you're talking about Jesus because I know his presence is here. Come on now. As long as you're in it, Lord. But be just to rub down with him. Anointed the Christos, the Christ, Jesus, the anointed one. He is the anointed one. And we have the anointing on us. My goodness. Just your anointing. The anointing breaks yokes. Mm. It don't just break them, but it annihilates them and destroys the yoke. The anointing is so strong that you can walk into somewhere and speak a word and see somebody get free enough where they can make, they can change their mind and make a decision for Christ. That you can walk in somewhere, Jason, and speak a word and it can break and tear down a system because the anointing is that powerful. It's the presence of Almighty God. Do you feel him in here? That he's on us, that you're saturated and marinated and just wet with the Holy Spirit. I remember years ago, I was in a place like I had like a total just breakdown. I was in a very bad place, just physical, mental, just like breakdown. I couldn't get up and do anything. If I was able to get up and wash my hair and cook something for supper the whole day, then that's something. That's just where I was at physically many years ago. I was in a bad place. I couldn't hear God. It was just, you know, it, was, it was horrible. I couldn't hear God like all of our friends, everybody had walked away from us. And it was a very hard place. And I remember one day I got my hair washed, didn't have the strength to dry it. We lived in another city several hours away. And I just went and laid down on the couch. Duke was gone. And I couldn't do anything but just say, Jesus. Jesus. Say his name. All of a sudden, it's like the walls got wet. And you could smell him. 
like the anointing oil and him just come dripping in the walls and dripping in the house. And I didn't know anything for about 45 minutes from that day forward. Every day I was stronger. Within about a month, I was able to function. But Jesus, just the anointing that comes and is able to break the crap and the garbage, not saying we don't need to take care of things legally. I know I'm speaking to here the Freedom Outpost, but it just it breaks. It breaks. You can walk into a heathen den of devils. You know what I'm talking about. But the light is in you. The glory of God is on you. The presence and the anointing. When you walk in the grocery store, wherever you go, when they walk into your office, Tim, I pray they come in there and they feel the presence of God and they just get answers. It don't make no sense. It's not going to be financial answers or whatever else, but they just get answers. They walk in there and suddenly they're clear and they walk out and say, oh, this is what I need to do or this is what that is. I prophesy that rests in your business there. They're going to want to come to just walk in the business and they don't know why. I used to have a house cleaning business years ago, and then when I went through that breakdown thing, I couldn't clean it, and I had people say, look, we'll pay you if you'll just come sit in the house. Because all I can tell you is when you leave, it's different. Me and my husband don't fight. The presence of God is in the house just because you sat there. I prophesy that on your business, Tim. They're going to come, and they might not know why. It might be somebody who's really foul-mouthed or whatever, but they're going to walk in, and it's like, I don't know, I don't understand. Something's going to get clear. It's the presence. I speak in anointing and anointing. It's going to cause great increase to you and to the people. But I speak in anointing that you will. My goodness, I see you like a lighthouse in this region that is just shining a light out. Somebody's praying. God said, this this stroll by Tim's. This stroll by Tim's. But I speak that kind of anointing and glory on you. Mm. What you've sowed, the Lord says, it's time for you to reap. In the spirit, both of you stand up. What you have sowed in your children, what have you believed, what have you stood for? Some of it you've seen it, some of it you ain't. God says, I give you a grandson, but there's way more coming. But he said, it's time to reap. It's time to reap. And Lord, I speak of finishing anointing on getting that house done and getting everything in order. But it's it's a season of reaping. It's a season of reaping that you reap, that you reap. That that word and that glory that you carry, sister, is no longer, it's no longer, um, I see like a faucet. That thing's like a fire hose. It just comes out. It just comes out. It's no longer contained. And I say, be baptized in the Holy Spirit and fire. I speak of fire. That God bypasses your mind. And I speak the fire of Almighty God on you. You can wake up during the night and say, "Woo, I'm hot. And it's God on you. It's God. I speak the fire of Almighty God on you. Thank you, Father. I bless your family. I speak over your sons. We call everything into line. Lord, what you, Lord says what you have sowed, I'm calling it all into line. I'm calling the day men into line. I'm calling them into line. I'm causing things to shift. I'm causing the wives to come. I'm causing things to get in order. The Lord says, watch what I will do over this next year, for I will astound you. Watch what I'm going to do on the sons. Watch. I already have the daughters walking. Walking in an alignment, but watch what I'm going to do in the sons. So, Lord, we thank you for that. Thank you for healing and for setting their mind straight. I don't mean this. I don't mean this. Mean. The Lord says I'm shifting his mind and I'm making it straight. It's coming straight. It's coming straight. I'm breaking the lies off of him. The lies that he has believed that he can't have this, that he can't have that, that he's almost saying He's almost been hid in a corner. Ben, come out of the corner. We call him out. We call him out. I say that his heart, his heart is soft and pliable to the Lord. What you have sowed, Job says in one translation, I will deliver those for whom you intercede because of the cleanness of your hands. And your hands, and your hands look pretty clean. So we say, deliver them, Father. Deliver them. Deliver them. Set Catherine and set Rick on fire. I speak the fire of God runs through the dame line. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. It shifts now. It shifts. The commission shifts. The old thing's done done. The Lord calls you into the new. Thank you, Father. Just take one step forward. Lord, I thank you. They both take a step forward. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Mm. You got something, Maggie, you need to come release it over them if you do. 
Shit, they keep it also for a day keep it. Shoo. Ooh. Whew. I'm just obeying the Lord. This looks different. But yeah. Shoo. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Father. You're anointing. You're anointing. They can keep praying, ain't mm. Thank you, Lord. Now, this is, this is something that I, I spoke about, I don't know, a few weeks ago, maybe. I've been mean, the last message that I, I spoke. Remember I talked about John chapter 2? We were talking about Jesus. They were at a wedding feast in Canaan. Something I want to tie in here. Remember they had a wedding feast, and they had run out of wine. And so Mary comes to Jesus, Mary, the mother of Jesus, and she says, Hey, they ain't got no wine. Do something about it. Can't you do something about it? And he said, Woman, what are you? It's, it's not time. Don't you understand? What you're asking me will change everything. It's going to cause the glory to come out of hiding. Mm. It's going to cause the miracle power to come out of hiding. What you're asking me will change everything. It's not time. She ignores him. Tells the servants to do whatever he says. You know the end of the story. He told the servants to fill up the water pitcher, pitchers with water. They put it in other pitchers, but when they poured it in the cups, it turned into wine. This was not a long period of time because it said the people there, the, the, the captain or the person that was over the, the, the ceremonies, he did master of ceremonies, he, did not, he didn't know they were out of wine. So this had to be like less than an hour, okay, that it happened. Now what happened from Jesus saying, it ain't time, to all of a sudden it's time. And I'd said this before, it was the demand that Mary put on him. My goodness, I feel God on this. Part of the release, reason the anointing and the glory mm, I'm fixing to get to has not been released as of yet is because the demand has not been put. God's just waiting, oh my goodness, for somebody to put a demand, for somebody to say, I don't care what it looks like. I'm not here for you. We're here for God. To put a demand on the... To put, and it said, I like this, it said, this was the first miracle that was performed in Galilee. And it said it was the beginning of signs, the revealing of his glory, and the disciples believed in him. Hmm. I'm telling you, we're about in the beginnings of glory, and there's many going to believe in him. Hmm. You're listening to me. We're being commissioned up higher, an increased anointing and an increase of glory. Now, John 2 connects the miracles into the revealing of glory. I know I'm not as good. I don't, I don't click a lot. Like, um, like Stephen does. <laughs> but this is what I want us to get. Impossibility, incurable, does not exist in the glory realm. Now see, we've been good in the anointing somewhat, and God is not going to change the anointing. God anointed Jesus. We need anointing. God, please anoint me. There's, there's, something, there's things that will never replace the anointing. I'm not saying that. But we've been in the anointing realm. Lay hands on the sick and they will recover. We lay hands on them, they get better. Or they do recover over a period. But it's like, okay, why don't we see that glory? Hmm. It's a glory realm. It's a higher realm. I believe it's a different realm that God's calling us to move in. See, and you know this, that God is restoring in us. In Georgia, we've been praying over Georgia, and in this nation, his original intention are the original glory. Hmm. Original glory. You do know we are. We have a deposit. You have a portion, a piece of glory in you that, go, that nobody else has. It's unique in this time, this season, for this hour. Nobody else has it. What they used to preach, you know, the church and say, well, if you don't do it, God will just use somebody else and disobey. It's a bunch of bull. Nobody else has that piece of glory that you have. Nobody has it. It's a unique piece of glory. But the glory of God sometimes... We could talk for two hours and really not define it, but it's the splendor, it's the brightness, it's the majesty of God. It's the glory, it's a manifested presence of God on display. My goodness. Hmm. Lord, we just step up and make a demand and say, commission us in the glory. Woo. Hmm. Now in Exodus, the Lord spoke to Moses and he said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Now, that's pretty cool. Even in war, there's rest in his presence, right? Be ye strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. There's a, there's a place of strength 
that we can step in. Are y'all, are y'all listening to me? Are we getting tired? But his presence will go before us and give us rest. Moses says, please show me your glory. The Lord said, I'll make all my goodness pass before you and I'll proclaim my name. So to see God's glory, we see his goodness, right? We know goodness is one of the six, it's the sixth fruit of the spirit. Goodness also leads men to repentance. And by the way, goodness is not grace, grace, grace. It's not that grace gospel that has tried to take truth out, that has disarmed the church. It's not that. It's having grace and truth both, the goodness of God. Because the goodness of God will speak truth. I'm going to move on because we're out of time. And it's also the names of God, the name of God. You see the glory in that. Jehovah Jireh. Lord, you're our, vi- you're our provider. Jehovah Shalom. Jehovah Nisi. The Lord of Sabaoth. The King of glory. My goodness, we see attributes of him in each of his name. I'm asking him right now. Let me see attributes in Jireh that I haven't seen before. Jehovah Jireh. I'm starting to see that. You are the provider. Let me see that. What do you need to see? Shalom. The Lord of glory. Let me see in your attributes. We're getting close to the end here. This is the part I want to get to. Commissioned up higher. Higher into the glory realm. I'm going to read a couple of scriptures to you. It's probably very familiar to you. But I talk fast. It won't take me but a minute to read them. Y'all listen fast. I can tell. Isaiah 6, verse 1 through 8. If you got the ping, you probably read it. The year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, the whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door were shaken by the voice of him who cried out. And the house was filled with smoke. So I said, woe is me. I'm undone because I'm a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal which he had taken with the tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away and your sin is purged. I also heard a voice, the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who shall go for us? And then I said, Here I am, send me. Hmm. Man, that is a powerful passage. I encourage you to go back and read it in Isaiah 6, 1 through 8. Just a couple of quick Things we're talking about commissioned up higher in the glory realm, and that is a picture of the glory. But the first thing we've seen, it was in the year that King Uzziah died. That was interesting. So, what needs to die this year so that you can fully come alive? Now, King Uzziah, I got some other scriptures, but I'm not for time's sake going to ring about read about him. But he was a powerful warrior, but he had a lot of religious pride, he had a lot of anger, he tried to go and to the temple with incense and all that. And they're trying to say, no, the priests are telling him, no, don't do that. It took 80 of them, 80 priests, 80, to try to stop him. And he still did it. Leprosy broke out on him. He died a leper. But the year that King Uzziah died, so what is it? What is it in us that needs to die that we can fully come alive? Now, I did some research, and I couldn't really, if this is true or not, so I don't know if it is or not, but it's still a good point that um, he was Isaiah's uncle. He was in the family line. So whether he was or not, Lord, if there's anything in the family line that needs to die, what needs to die this year? And even a better question is, will we let it die? You know, I was comfortable in last season. I was comfortable in the anointing move that way. I wasn't comfortable doing it this way. Are we, are we going to let it die? What needs to die? Will we let it die? Will we shift, Kathy, and go a completely different direction? Will I let it die? Will, will I do that? What needs to die? 
Is it fear to confront someone in your family? What, it, what, what needs to die? Ask the Lord that question. What needs to die? And will you let it die in the year that that died? That's when you see the glory coming. Also, we're still out of that, um, out of Scripture, Isaiah 6. said, I saw the Lord. There's a gift of seeing. We've been talking about it all, all night. This is a... 5785, five hey year, means to behold. There is a seer anointing, a gifting. God wants you to see. Whether that means that you see it in the spirit like you're watching a movie on TV, whether that means you see an internal picture, or that means that you are just one that God pulls out like a, something on a sign or something natural, but it's, a, it's the gift of sight to be able to see. God wants you to see this year. Where, what, and you already have the seer gift. A lot of you do. Well, Lord, we pray that you increase it. Ah, I just heard him. There, there are attachments to that seer gift that need to be gone. If you speak, if you watch it online, I speak to you too. Lord, remove all the attachments off the seer gift. Let us see in a way that we've never seen before. We see in freedom. See it through freedom. Lord, change the lens of the way we see. The seer gift that we're able to see. You need to ask him for it. Lord, I want to see. I want that gift. I want to see you. I want to see what you're doing, Father. Ask him. It's not like, okay, well, I'll sit here and I'll hear that. and Maybe a boulder will fall from the sky and hit you in the head. You know, it's like waiting. You have to ask him. Ask him, Lord, in your time. Say, Lord, I want to see. I want to know what you're doing, Father. Maybe my flesh don't want to and I'm afraid, but I want this commissioning. Thank you for the anointing. I need the anointing, but I'm ready to step up in the glory. I want to see, I want to see the glory covering the whole earth. I want to see the glory covering your people. They just walk in somewhere and something shifts because the glory of God is on. It's the hour and it's the season for it. Father, Ask him for it. Ask him for it. Thank you for the healing. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for that. But I've got to have your glory. I've got to have your manifest presence. Whether you want to put that gyra thing on me one day or whatever you want to put. I've got, we've got to have your glory. We've got to walk in another realm. Yes, the anointing is going up. Yes, the anointing is increasing, but it's glory. I'm t- today, I was just spending a lot of time on this because it was different. My preparation was different, and I'm like, Lord, am I on target? Am I whatever? And he said, you're in a new season. You're in a new time. You ain't going to do it like you did before. And I said, okay, God. And his presence come on me in the house, and I couldn't get up for a while. And I said, thank you, Lord, for your glory, that his presence shows up when you're talking to him. Then wherever you walk, it is going to go all over them. I'm telling you, the glory of Almighty God. Scotty, there's a glory coming on you. Stand up that you haven't seen before. God said, I've shifted what needs to shift. And there's a glory that's coming on you that's going to restore your life. It's going to restore your health. It's going to get you to where you need to go. But there is a glory of Almighty God coming on you. You have seen healings. You have walked in faith, daughter. But the Lord says now you're going to see things you haven't seen before. Things you haven't even read before in books. You're going to see it. And you're going to be a forerunner of it. The Lord says, they're going to say, that's that lady that walked in Kroger's and everybody that had bad knees and shoulders got healed. That's that lady that walks around the street to exercise and we don't understand it. But me and my husband start crying and get things right. That's the lady. I speak the glory of God on you. It goes to another level. Thank you, Father. And the Lord says, what I've deposited in you, it will go down in your family. There is one in your family that will receive it. And you will impart it before you take your last breath on this earth. The Lord said, he will receive it. I am preparing his heart to receive it. It will go down. It will go down to him. But it's not going to be what you carry. It will be a double portion. Like from Elijah to Elisha. It is coming. The Lord said, I have seen what you have sowed. And I am coming, daughter, on your behalf. I am coming and I am moving in your family and I'm putting and placing my glory upon you. Thank you, Father. Mm. Thank you, Father. Mm. Mm. We're about done. How about Isaiah 6, the seraphim? You know who the seraphim are? They're the fiery ones. They're the ones that's around the throne of God. My goodness. The angels. I was praying today and I said, Lord, would, would you send a seraphim? One of the fiery ones that's around the throne. My goodness. The atmosphere and the presence around the throne. We're going to need that where we're going to walk. 
that we carry the throne, the atmosphere. Send a fiery one, Lord. Send one. Send one. I've asked him to send them. They're the ones that had the, the live coal and touched the lips, right? To purge the lips. Because in God's presence and in his glory, you realize, you see everything. I was in a meeting one time and the glory of God showed up. And there was a dude that went down on the floor. And he was a homosexual. And he was screaming and naming names and repented. But nobody remembered nothing. Other than God just had him out and was delivering. But in the glory, he realized what it was and was repenting. Nobody remembered none of that. Just that he went down and God touched him and whacked him. It's like the glory of God get on you. And we realize, Lord, help us that we repent for ourselves, that we repent for our nation. But it's like we realize who we are, but we realize how good he is. I was telling somebody, it might have been Rebecca before it started, um, <clears throat> right before the worship started. That I was baptized with the Holy Spirit, I don't know how many, many, many years ago. And so I was actually baptized at my house with my cat watching me. But then I went to a service a couple of days later, and I was wondering, okay, did I, did I get that or not? And so I went to this service, and I don't know what kind of holiness, something other, something it was. But I mean, it was, it was, we'd never seen nothing like that. We'd been Baptists, I mean, they were going for it. And I'm like, hey, this is pretty cool. And so I was standing in the front row there, and the guy said, you know, if you want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, if you don't know you are, come up. I come up there. And so when he went to touch me, the other head of baptism, you felt a wind start flowing through there. I mean, people were turning around looking. It hit me and threw me back. What was it, at least one pew or two? And I'm like, whoa. It was like I felt the power of God just whack me, but he didn't hurt me. It's like you men know you you what get up what was it two twenty one ten whatever electricity but it didn't hurt me, and it scared me. I was just uh, I was shaking. I was a mess. Why? Because I felt his power, but I felt his heart. Hmm. That's what it's like in the glory. It's like oh God, have mercy on me, but I feel your heart. Hmm. My goodness, do you feel him in this place? Do you feel him, Lord? Let us be sensitive again. All the storms, all the crap, all the. All the election stuff. Lord, let us be sensitive to you. One word from God will shift it. One word from God will change it. Lord, let us be sensitive again to feel your, whew, your awesome power, but to know that you're good. You're good. The fear of the Lord, I believe, is being restored to us personally, to the church, and to the nation. Let's hope it ain't going to take Ananias and Sapphira or Herod being eat up with worms when he don't honor God. I bet that was something to watch, don't you? So the angel struck him and he was eat up with worms. I'm thinking, yeah, let that happen one time in the political realm. Let's just see. <laughs> I, let's, let's hope we don't have to go to that, you know. But the fear of the Lord, that's what I felt. First time I ever seen an angel. I mean, I was still was so messed up. I was as close to demonized as you could be, being possessed and not. And, and not. And I was just crying out to God, praying in tongues. I didn't know nothing else to do. And I seen him, and he was huge. I mean, he's, you know, he's like at the top of that door frame there. And I screamed because he scared me. So that's what I'm talking. You're just, you're just on your face. When I had the surgery, one showed up in my room, and it was so strong. I'm like, ooh, I couldn't even look at him. I was afraid. But that reverential fear of the Lord, come on now, is coming back to the church. Like, oh, are we just going to ordain homosexuals and marry them? And come on now. God bless them and heal them. And there's a revival coming to them. We prayed for that in D.C. You got to watch what God's fixing to do through them. But come on, you can't bring that kind of mess in the church. Come on, you can't bring that kind of stuff in and say it's okay. And I know what time it is. I'm trying to wrap it up here. But when we were in D.C., there was a young man. I think it was it Ross Johnston. And I haven't had time to check him out a lot. But he was giving testimony over the million women thing in D.C. He was raised by two lesbians. They were a couple, and they wanted a child, so his mama went to a sperm bank, artificially inseminated, and he was raised by a lesbian couple. But, but, when he was a teenager, God whacked him. He had an encounter with God. Now, his mama and the other woman separated. Last I heard, I don't know if his mama saved or not, but she does support him. Guess what he's doing? Traveling around, seeing homosexuals set free. Is that Jesus? I'll put you right in the middle of a lesbian couple. That's what I'll do. Come on. And his testimony, that's what he's doing. He's, he's going around the country and seeing them free. Is that God or what? I'm, I'm telling you, there's more 
encounters. There's more supernatural stuff like that going to happen. Pray for that in people. Pray for it. God, let there be that kind of encounter that so shifts. Whatever you come after me with, devil, we're just going to flip it. Come on. Come on. The glory of God. That is just, that's absolutely just mind-blowing. But yes, we prophesied that the LGBTQ and whatever other letter you want to throw on there, that we prophesy salvation to them. We prophesied that spirit of broken off of them and they are healed and restored because they have a purpose and a destiny. They have answers. They're needed in the medical field. They're needed in every field, but they're bound up. We prophesy they come clean and a great revival. They'll be the next ones that leads the revival. It won't be your little denominational churches. It'll be the lesbians and the homosexuals that are getting free that's going to lead it. That's Jesus. That's Jesus. If you won't listen to me, church, not talk about this, but you won't listen to me, okay. Let me just find one that's right amongst two lesbians. Let me just find one that's deep in it. Let me just show up and show them who I am. I don't know that I believe for a long time that he could encounter somebody like that. What did he do in your life? Come on. He can do it. He will do it. Do you really think we're in this last of the last days and the last hour when the United States of America is holding in balance? And it's not just the U.S. You've got Israel. You've got the whole world is in balance. And he is just going to sit up there and twiddle his thumbs. We ask you for those kind of encounters, Lord, in the church, in us, in those that don't know you, in those that are lost as a goose in fog and deep in any kind of sin that we could possibly think of. We speak it, Lord. That the glory of God covers this nation. You can try to shut up a Donald Trump or somebody else, but it's kind of hard when they're everywhere. When they're everywhere, when they're being healed, when they're being delivered, when they're learning who they are and getting free in Jesus and turning against that dark agenda. God, we speak that kind of glory. Let it start in Georgia. Georgia's a forerunner. We're apostolic state, so we say, Lord, target us here. Do it here. Let there not be one LGBTQ in the state of Georgia because they're all delivered. Let the crime rates go way down in the state of Georgia because they're all getting delivered. Unseat the wicked and authority in the state of Georgia. Let Georgia go before, Father. Lord, I thank you. Commission us up higher in your glory. Friend, come on up higher. Come on up higher, friend. Last two things, still in Isaiah 6, when he said, Behold, look, I've touched you. Don't let the enemy talk you out of what God gave you. Realize that God's touched you. Don't let him talk you out of it. Anybody? The only way you lose is if you quit. The only way you lose is if you believe the enemy. If you believed it, repent, renounce it, come out of agreement with it. And finally, he said, who shall I send and who shall go for us? That, that requires an answer. Will you go up higher? Here I am, Lord. Send me. Commission me. I'll go up higher. Hmm. Hmm. Come up higher, friend. So if you answer that call, just stand up. Lord, we say in fear and trembling in some ways <laughs> that we will go up higher. We answer the call. We want to be your friend. God, shift, purify, take the cold, touch our lips, do whatever you got to do in us, Lord. And we know that's a dangerous prayer, but we want you more than we're afraid of the consequences of that. Lord, we realize, we're starting to realize by your spirit, the hour that we live in. And Lord, we say, here we are, send us. We want to be David's mighty men. We have been, but there's a whole nother level. There's a whole increase, a specific authority and glory that you want to put on us. Father, we are so thankful for your anointing, but we say we must have your glory. And not just on Thursday nights and not just on a men's meeting or at Jackie's table, but we've got to have your glory in our homes and on us. God, we say we are your remnant within the remnant. We're like David's men. We are an absolute mess. But we are yours, and we say we are totally dependent on you.
So, Lord, now where your people are tired, this also includes anybody watching online or later in YouTube. Lord, I speak a refreshing right now in the name of Jesus. God, he told me there was healing in the house. So I speak healing. Healing to, every, healing to everything, that every tiredness, it goes now in Jesus' name. All weariness goes. It goes. It goes. It's, I see like, like, a, like a, um, what do you call it? those whiteboards, and the Lord's just taking his hand and just erasing it. It just goes. It just goes. It just goes. All the worries, the things that we're looking at, looking at <clears throat> I see it being put in the other column. God loves me. He's got it. He's got it. So, Lord, I thank you for shifting something in us tonight. Lord, we receive the commission Woo. <laughs> to go up higher. Friend, come up higher. Commission us in the anointing, in the glory, in the name of Jesus. And, Father, we seal this word by the power of the Holy Spirit, I declare the birds of the air will not come and try to steal it. <clears throat> and Lord, I speak the kind of encounter that we talked about with that young man. I speak that on all of us and everybody watching. <laughs> Lord, Whew. encounter us. We need you. Help us. Help us. Encounter us, Lord. We need that kind of shift. Mm. I'm trying to close it, Jonathan. I, that encounter is coming on your house. It's shifting you. It's shifting Sarah. It's shifting Isaac, Michaela, Anna. It is, it is shifting you. I speak that encounter. The glory of God is coming on you. Things you've tried to get out of and not and been concerned about this, that, and the other, it's going to let you go because it don't want to hold on to you anymore. So I speak that kind of encounter in you. The Lord says it's not going to be hard to get aligned because my glory is so there. It's like a piece of a puzzle. Like, ooh, I go right here. So I prophesy that to you. I speak that to you. There's a shift in your finances that comes now. You've been faithful. Mm. Right, will you come here? The Lord says you have been faithful. Mm. You've sowed when you really didn't have to sow. You've made decisions that was hard to make for your family. But God says, I'm mm. payback. <laughs> Lord, I speak it. Jira. Jira on your household. I speak it on your line, Lord. I speak it. The Lord says your children will never lack. They'll have, they'll have wives and husbands, and they will not lack. I prophesied in your family line to your children's children, they will not lack. They will not know lack, but they will know Jesus. They'll know Jesus. They'll know Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, want me to share this. I had the same dream two nights in a row um, last night and the night before, and it lines up with what Penny was saying. Um, so I dreamed, I woke up in the middle of the night. I dreamed that I woke up. I was asleep, but I thought I was awake. Um, and the bed was huge. And I needed to go to the bathroom. I'm 41 years old, and it was 4 o'clock in the morning, so that's what happens. I spun around to hop out of the bed and, like, felt, you know, the bed was massive. The room was massive. My wife decorates the house. There's some kind of ladder looking thing in a room that she hangs stockings on at Christmas you know I say she says isn't this great and I say yeah and I, I don't know what it is but yeah um oh yeah she's gonna see this <laughs> oh well um so yeah. um she does such a wonderful job decorating our house. Huh? <laughs> um, so, <laughs> um, anyway, that, that ladder thing, I noticed it, and I, you know, it's like this tall in real life. And I was like, man, I couldn't even climb it. I'm so small. What, what's happened? And I felt so small. And I woke up and just, you know, wow, that was a weird dream. Got up, went to the bathroom. You know, you have to decide at four, do I just get up or do I try to go back to sleep? Maybe that's too much information, but some of you guys. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah, so went back to sleep. Next night, exact same dream. And uh, this time, I did like any of us, I think, would do. And I said, uh, yes, Lord, here am I. And... I knew it was the exact same dream that I was in the same situation. 
And right after I said that, I heard, get up. And so I got up, and each of you take this, what it would mean to you. I got up, and as I stood up, I hit my head on the ceiling of our room. I wasn't small. I was bigger than our house. But the enemy was making me believe how small I was. And, that I, and for me to operate from there, everything was way too big for me. Even things that I, in real life I thought was small. But when the Lord said, get up, and I stood up, I hit my, my head on the ceiling. So take that what you will, but that's two nights in a row, same dream. And when I said, okay, Lord, what? I hit my head on the ceiling. Okay. I don't know how to do that. Uh, Lord, I speak that everybody hits their head on the ceiling. <laughs> in Jesus' name. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. Okay. Amen. Thank you. So I'm bringing this to Stephen, but Kathy Parker, I speak the glory of God on you. I speak the glory of God in relationships. I speak the glory of God on you. Ooh, in your house. For the Lord says, I'm washing away the effects of a very hard season. When I touched you just then, I felt scarring on your heart. So I'm just going to lay my hand right here, okay? Oh, mm, my goodness. You might need to come touch her, Scotty. To speak healing to this heart. My goodness, my goodness. And I hear Father saying that I am pleased with you, daughter. And I'm healing this heart. This heart. I'm healing this heart. And I'm putting a glory on you that you've never walked in before. Ooh. Mm. Thank you, Papa. Thank you, Papa. Mm. Show how that they keep us. Mm. My daughter, I am so pleased with you. Your tears are diamonds in my hand. How I love you. How I am proud of you. Look up, my child. I will give you the strength. I will give you what you need. Step out. Take my hand. It's right there. And hit your head on the ceiling. <laughs> Audrey, the Lord says the glory of God is creating pathways for you. Again, like he spoke to Jonathan, the glory is going to draw you like a magnet into the direction you should go. Because he said, I'm making up for, long, for lost time, it seems like, in your life. Your plan was, I need to do here by this and this by this and this by this. But the Lord says, you're still right on track with me. And he says, I'm bringing a husband. And he said, there will be children. And I give you the desires of your heart. But the glory of God, my goodness. I'm going to touch you before I get the glory of God. Woo. Ooh. 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 He said, you haven't missed it. You haven't missed it. Thank you, Lord. There's still time. There's still time. There's still time. God, thank you, Father. Mm. 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 The Lord said he sees your heart, how you loved and you cared for your daddy. There's a blessing resting upon you because of that. What is this? The first, ing- the first commandment? The first Man, but that comes with the blessing, honor your father and your mother. The Lord says, I'm, I'm increasing the honor on you. Ooh, double portion on you. You, you're, you, aren't, you aren't, time hasn't passed you by. It hasn't passed you by. Say, oh, no. Oh, no. no. Say, oh, no. Oh, no. Toto. We're not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> Do you understand, right? I mean, if you remember that movie, right? It, it shifts at that point from black and white to color. It's a brilliant burst in. And we have to get... There's This time is unusual. And it is time for you to be as unusual as he created you to be. I'm serious. Normal sucks. And it's not who you are. He put a fragment of his glory in you that has never, ever been before, and it won't be again. And he is very zealous for that. And he wants it revealed. And if we'll 
give that room by the Spirit. It, it's going to be wild. What else you got to do? If, if you knew that you had six days left to live in perfect health, and then you'd fall over dead, you don't know how many days you got. What is tomorrow going to be like? That doesn't mean you got to go out and do something dramatic, but it means you got to take it in and be present. Just be present. I mean, it's, it's not complicated. The heroic isn't big. It's in a million small things. So let me just, you need to do that online. I'll tell you now, so, oh, okay. so we're going to do one thing before we go. Father, thank you for how you've moved in this. Lord, just imprint your glory afresh. Lord, again, it's like those servants in the household of the king looking at the king's kids who were bumping into walls. <laughs> but they understand there's a glory on them because they're royalty. Lord, help us to move into that. Thank you for the, the angels and the angelic realm that's here to help us walk this out. Lord, stir it up. Make us so dangerous for good. In the name of Jesus. Amen.